Okay, so we're live here at Gamescom, actually. I'm Steve Gibson from Gearbox Software. With me today is actually Scott Kester and Anthony Birch. Hey, here you guys go. Hi, I'm Scott Kester, uh, con conceptual designer on Borderlands 2. I'm uh, Anthony Birch, and I'm the writer of Borderlands 2. Oh, look at that. So what we're doing here at Gamescom is actually giving live demonstrations of Borderlands 2. We're showing people quite a bit of the game, actually, showing off a new character class, showing off new environments, showing off all kinds of changes to the AI systems, changes to the UI systems, vehicle systems. Uh, you name it, we've taken a look at it, and we're working really, really hard to make this a true Borderlands sequel. We're really very excited to actually show this. So if you happen to be able to get to Gamescom, come see our game. We're showing it s still Saturday and Sunday live till, I believe, uh, 6 p.m. is what the guys are telling me here. So come see the game. Now, if you aren't able to see the game here, we're also going to show it over at PAX, uh, PAX West or PAX Prime as they call it in Seattle. Um, I believe the date is, what, next Saturday? Somebody know here? Ne starts next Friday through Saturday. So come to Seattle, come to PAX, come see Borderlands 2 live. You'll come see actually myself presenting the game or uh, one, of the, one of our coworkers here. So I'll tell you a little bit about what we have to show and hopefully you guys will be able to come see it. We're going to start off, actually, what we'll do in Borderlands 2 is you're going, to, you're going to find yourself about five years after the events of the first Borderlands. Now, what happens is you're going to be a new adventurer. You're going to be, actually, in our demo, you're going to be the Gunzerker, the dual-wielding class. That's kind of a, I guess you could say, a natural evolution of the Berserker class. So dual-wielding, and what's great about this is that you're going to get, be able to not just dual-wield pistols or things like that. You'll be able to dual-wield any two weapons that you want. So in Borderlands 2, if you want to use rocket launchers, sniper rifles, submachine guns, any kind of thing, you'll be able to dual wield these things. And as you get evolved deeper and deeper into, into your skill tree, you'll be able to do other things with these weapons as well. You'll see the skill trees actually are, have a little bit more depth to them where when you have what we call game changers. So a lot of times when you get further into a game, you would actually get your skill tree and you're going through it and you'll be like, wow, level 25, 2% uh, boost in my firing rate, and you start feeling like it's just a little iteration. So what we're doing in Borderlands 2 is with these game changers, you're going to have actually real significant changes to how you use your skills as you get deeper into the game. So you feel that growth and choice later on in the game and not just in the early goings. All right, so what I would love for you guys to do here, actually take a quick look over at what we got going on here. So here we are actually, we're at the, t the dam top that we're showing, and we actually have robot reinforcements coming in from the moon. And here, L is actually showing off the dual wielding skill we were just talking about. Oh, we're already back on SP. I wish we could show you guys some more stuff. This rules, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're really not pissed now that they're seeing it. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's <laughs> so <laughs> we want you guys to come see the game. We want you to come watch more Borderlands 2. So what we're going to show more, show you guys more when you come see the game is you're going to see our Gunzerker traveling across the top of a dam as you chase, actually, Roland, who's been captured by Hyperion. Hyperion is run by Handsome Jack. Now, Handsome Jack, through shenanigans, <laughs> right? Shenanigans, is that correct? Correct. That is the legal term for it. <laughs> so through shenanigans, is now in charge, of the, in charge of the Hyperion Corporation, and he's used that corporation to change it to more of a war machine, then now he's actually taking credit for what the original actually here let me have uh, anthony explain that story to you of borderlands real quick there you go so yes these shenanigans involve uh him taking credit for all the events of the first game the vault hunters from the first game are now npcs and they basically become fugitives public enemy public enemies you know one through four because jack now says that he opened the vault he saved pandora and actually everybody else who's not on the hyperion payroll is a bandit his motivation is to clear the entire planet of pandora of bandits which sounds awesome except he's kind of being a fascist about it and your goal is to sort of, with the help of the guardian angel from the original game, meet up with the Vault Hunters again, uh, have some adventures, and go after Handsome Jack, kill him, and, and uh, free Pandora. That sounds like shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're doing here, actually, is we have Roland, who's been captured by Handsome Jack and Hyperion. So we've got, yeah, you can take a look real quick, actually, if you could. So we've got more robots actually coming in as reinforcements. Oh, and you knocked his arm off there, too. And that's actually an exploder lo robot there. So what we have going on is you are now chasing Roland across the dam top, who's been captured by the warden robot here. And you're, you are trying 
to capture, you're trying to, you know, regain Roland so you can work together with him to, you know, exact your revenge against Handsome Jack. Now, as you do this, you're going across the dam top, you're going to see all kinds of different robots that are run. Here, take a look. Show, show them a little bit more. So you actually, here you see L. she's fighting a badass warloader. You actually also see the surveyor there who is coming in to help heal. So what we have in Borderlands 2 is we have a lot of the AI now communicating with each other. So you're going to come and see the different surveyors and other robots, some guys who heal robots, some guys who help to amplify things, all kinds of different AIs working together to cause different effects. What we're trying to do is have a situation where you no longer just, hey, look, a robot, I shoot that. You actually now have to evaluate the entire battlefield. And you look at how all these AIs work together, and now you're actually making tactical decisions of who you need to shoot first. And it's no longer, oh, big guy, I shoot. Right? Is that about right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So hopefully you'll come see it. And what else do we have showing on is the, uh, you're going to see a little bit of a glimpse of Maya, the new siren. Now, we are not showing off quite yet what her skill is, but you're going to get to see what she looks like. Now, every siren in the world of Borderlands, the world of Pandora, is unique and different. So you remember Lilith, the phase-walking siren. Her skill is unique to her. Now, you're going to have to get, to get to see what happens with Maya a little bit later as we hopefully reveal more of Borderlands 2 in the future. Now, actually, at the very end of this demo, you're going to see some really amazing things, too. So what is the thing about Hyperion is they are originally a mining corporation. So what happened is when Handsome Jack took over, he's been repurposing this company to be more of a war machine, really, as I said earlier. So what happens is when you get early on, you start seeing engineers who are now combat engineers. You can see those loader robots that are now like exploder robots and things like that. And you saw that war robot there. Now when you get deeper into the game, you actually see even more war-oriented robots as the technology has evolved and they've gotten more into this. So you'll get to see peaks of that as well. And I think that's about what we show. We all, actually, a couple more things we show in the demo, and we'd love for you guys to come see. We show off vehicles, four-player vehicles. We show off how we, we worked on the physics of those things. We've worked on how those touch the world. Touch the world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> how the true. vehicles interact with the world. What else we get to show you guys is how when you interact with the AI, when you shoot guys, you have, like, knockdown stakes. You have a situation now when the AI is no longer just, oh, I'm alive and, oh, I'm dead. Now you have situations where you can have stuns, you have knockdowns, you have staggers. AI now has a lot, a lot more different behaviors based on what you're doing. And also, even when you're in a vehicle, we, if you run into them or run them over and things like that, they'll go flipping over your hood, all these things like that. We worked really hard on making it a living, breathing world. And you go through different places like, say, the Merrowfield uh, Arctic Tundra area. You'll start off in there, actually, and you'll see how the, the AI there works, and you'll also see how the world is actually alive and moving. We have a lot more motion now in the world. We want it to feel like a living, breathing world. So the team here at Gearbox has done a whole lot to show that to you. So please, please come see our demo. We are so excited to share Borderlands 2 with you. And actually, we should probably just kick into some, some of the questions you guys sent in, right? Sound good? Somebody act like they agree. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. Here, I'll, um, let's kick these off with, so we have uh, Borderlands Freak 13. So what familiar faces can we look forward to to seeing in Borderlands 2? I think, Anthony, you're a good one for this one, right? Here you go. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to see the original four Vault Hunters as NPCs. We're also going to see Marcus, Scooter, Zed. Uh, a lot of characters from the first game are going to uh, reappear. And the cool thing is that since five years have passed since the events of the first game, you might see a lot of these characters in sort of different circumstances than when you're used to, especially the Vault Hunters. I think that'll be sort of fun to see how Pandora has changed them, what Handsome Jack may have done to them, and all, and all that kind of stuff. All right. Here, I'll do, um, here we go. What is this? We're going to go with Philly 72, F-I-L-I 72. Are there new weapons we haven't seen before from in, in Borderlands 2? Actually, Scott here, you were, you're in the room where a lot of those are being designed, right? Yeah. Here, here you go. Um, yeah, there's definitely lots of new weapons in Borderlands 2. I mean, uh, that's one of the things we looked at with guns being the driving force behind the game. We, we really took the system... We rebuilt it kind of from the ground up, from conceptual side. Uh, we got a, a fantastic concept artist. Kevin Duke has been working on those. Uh, there's there's all sorts of things like we're showing off here, the Vladoff guns with uh, mini guns. So, uh, we've got all sorts of different from the TDR, which uh, each each of the manufacturers have such a distinct, uh, unique feel to them, such a, it, like going back to the TDR. So as 
you, instead of reloading the gun, you're just throwing the gun out. And depending on how many, how much ammunition you have left in the in the clip, that that does destruction as a grenade type. And you, so it's kind of a balance of, do I want to keep the ammo or do I want to just, uh, y you know, do I want to shoot or do I want to throw that? And and those one of the some of the examples of uh, as far as where we're going with that and uh, all the attributes that they're they're going to have. So. All right. Yeah, so the, there's so more weapons, right? Oh, yeah, tons more weapons. More weapons, tons okay. Weapons. All right, what do we have? We have Savage Unforgiven. Okay, in the Game Informer article, the gun peddlers of Pandora feature, all the manufacturers are listed except for one, Atlas. Will the Atlas Corporation not be making an appearance in Borderlands 2? Um, if you play the, the first Borderlands and uh, the DLC, The Secret Army of General Knox, then you know that you obliterated the Atlas Corporation. Actually, what the Vault Hunters did, they, they killed Commandant Steele, or they sort of watched as she died. Uh, you know, they annihilated the entire invasion Spoiler. force. Yeah, sorry. Spoilers! Um, they annihilated, annihilated Atlas' entire invasion force. They killed the main general. Their admiral is five years old. I mean, uh, Atlas was pretty much poised to just get completely screwed over, and the Vault Hunters helped push forward that corrupt, uh, push forward, uh, sorry, push the corrupt corporation over the edge. <laughs> I'm eloquent. Um, but yeah, you actually screwed over Alice so completely that their weapons don't show up in the game at all because they're just schmucks now. Nobody really respects them anymore, which gave Hyperion the opportunities to sort of come and become the new major manufacturer in the galaxy, which is how they got so powerful and so evil.